Ladies and gentlemen, K Kim here. Uh, welcome to the market update. Hope you guys had a good week trading this week. Uh, market is pretty much flat today. As you can see here, where is my pen? All right, so you can see that on the S&P, we're pretty much flat for the day. Uh, but looks like uh, we had, you know, uh, let's see, when was the Monday was 10th, right? August 10th. So the Monday was right here. That was Monday right there. So we had a slight, very slight move there. Um, we're going to continue with our, um, you know, a little bit more extensive analysis on the weekend edition. Um, you know, and so we're going to be looking at Spider, uh, Q's, Transport, Russell 2000. Let's look at Bangs, look at Gold and Silver, and as usual, we'll end the video with the Bitcoin right now. So um, I think, you know, uh, this is something that we've been talking about last several weeks. Uh, S&P is continued to slowly grind higher while the Nasdaq's, um, you know, obviously well above all time high today or, you know, last several weeks now. And I think, um, you know, a lot of people are potentially waiting for a pullback or something like that. We will get a pullback. The problem is we do not know when we're going to get there. Right. I And we are extended and uh, sooner or later we'll get it. Uh, we're going to talk all about that and, 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 and trying to, you know, trying to accomplish the matter, which how should we prepare ourselves going forward? for next week. It is all coming up right now. So uh, let's actually go into the um, 65 minute chart and let's uh, do a little quick follow up from what we talked about yesterday. So it looks like uh, this was yesterday. That's where it closed yesterday. And we talked about how that my short-term moving average been acting as support. Looks like today we had a very, very slight gap down, a little fluctuation uh, early first hour of this morning. Looked like it did pierce uh, below my short-term moving average. But as you can see, some of those lower wicks there, there was a short-term support. And then second hour, we pushed higher. We threw a little bit of hangman candle, another hangman. And then we did see a little bit of selling on the fifth hour and looks like on the last hour we did see another plunge uh the micro term plunge last hour but we continue to see that lower wick it is no coincidence we closed above my short-term moving average yet again so we actually on a closing basis looking at this 65 minute chart we've never closed below my short-term moving average the last couple days. This was yesterday. This is today. Looks like we have a hammer candle there now. So obviously that hammer candle needs to be confirmed. Hammer looks something like this. This is a hammer, right? That's a hammer. Uh, we have hammer here, right? Um, and we got the hammer here. So hammer is most effective um, if you're also concerned about the uh, short-term candlestick analysis. It's the hammer means really not a whole lot on a sideways move. Like you can see, this was a sideways right here, and we threw that hammer, right? And it really meant nothing. And really, that hammer was interpreted more usually when it's when when the hammer appears after a move. Usually, that means that's a hangman, which is a it has a bearish implication. Um, that also looked like hammer there again. That that's not a hammer because it appeared after. A bullish move hammer is a hammer when it comes after a down move after a down move after a down move that's a true hammer but again um like any candlestick analysis if you're looking at candlestick analysis or if you're looking at candlesticks i don't know 65 minute daily weekly monthly one candle it really doesn't mean anything until you see a follow through so you can see this hammer right here definitely did see a follow through next day definitely that's hammer was confirmed and after that there was some fluctuations here but we did see that hammer did have some weight and market 
inevitably moved higher, right? So we got the hammer again. Uh, what does that mean? We will know more uh, first couple hours of trading on Monday. If we do see a follow through to the upside, maybe let's say on Monday we see something like this, right? That's Monday first hour. And then that's the second hour, something like that, clearing this resistance with two hours of follow through candles. At that time, we can say, you know what, that hammer has some weight because it did find support at that support area, which is the gap area. And it closed above um, my short term moving average. It has a pretty decent size, longer the better, decent size wick there. And that's a shaved top. So when you see a shaved top, a little bit of green body, and long lower wick above or at the support that actually uh, carries a little bit more weight. But the final decision comes when you see a follow through. So I wish on Monday, I'll tweet things out if we do see a follow through. Let's check out that oscillator real quick here. So think about that, about this oscillator is that the oscillator has been pretty much grinding sideways for a couple weeks here. This is first time I've seen this signal. We talked about, you know, we've been covering this every single day last couple weeks, talking about this rare signal. Finally, we did lose this resistance here and the oscillator did see falling over, but we're not seeing the price substantiating this signal here, right? So what we're seeing right now is price correcting through what? Through time, not through price. And this is not good for the bears because bears want to truly materialize from this signal here. Because a lot of time, um, you know, when we do see my oscillator pulling back, you see some selling. We saw that here. Uh, we saw bigger selling here, right? And some selling here after the oscillator falling over. Right, and so these seller sellings were lasted at least two, three days. We are seeing my oscillator, right? And we talked about potentially this bear subvergence, which is very weak because it's not peak to peak; it's grinding. So it lose loses a lot of its potency. So I wouldn't even call this as bear subvergence. So you can see that how oscillator is pulling back, the price isn't. Why this isn't good for the bears is that if we if this thing starts to curl back up any moment i'm not sure if it's gonna curl up here it's gonna come all the way down i'm not sure we'll figure it out we'll come back we'll re-examine next week but let's say if we do see let's say on monday this thing crosses back up like this that means bulls have plenty of room to move now you see what i mean it was at the overbought level buyers were tired but buyers kept moving higher and then when finally oscillator did roll over price isn't rolling over because remember we talked about it yesterday there are too many supports here we got the gap support we got the short-term moving average support best case scenario for the bears i talked about is gapping it down below this gap that gap is gonna make things hectic for the bears so while the oscillator is pulling back prices isn't so we have to come back tomorrow or monday and i'll tweet things out when i if i see any kind of development if i see my oscillator curling back up or if i see that you know hammer candle getting confirmed and we'll have to re-examine on Monday. So let's go back to daily chart here and look at the overall picture. So overall picture, you can see buyers finally feel that little tiny gap that we had back in late February. That means bears no longer have any gaps to work with. All these down gaps, there were many. All the, there were like eight or 10 of them. All the gaps have been fully filled as of today. We no longer have down gaps anymore. Some of those gaps had to stay open if bears gonna utilize any of that selling pressure. But in the process of the buyers filling all those gaps, guess what? They opened up their own gaps and these gaps are not filled. Again, every time I say the gaps are not filled, people always say, well, yeah, it's gonna get filled. Gaps should all be filled. And I said this before, in a bull market, primary term bull market, gaps not, gaps don't have to be filled. This gap was never filled. This was back in 2016. Here, I want to go back to 2016. That's when we saw pretty significant uh, corrections, right? So there's this gap that never got filled. There's this gap that never, and I said this before, there was a dead gap right here that never got filled. This gap right here, 
that never got filled. This gap right here, this never got filled. This gap, that's a pretty decent sized gap here. This gap never got filled. And then look where the market is. Doesn't mean it has to be filled, right? We can go back down more and there are many gaps that weren't filled, especially market is in a primary term up trend, right? You understand what I mean by primary. When I say primary, I mean last, you know, looking at the daily chart, obviously. When I look at the daily chart, and when I say primary term, I'm talking like five, 10 years. When I say intermediate term trend, I'm talking about this is intermediate term, intermediate term trend. When I say short term trend, I mean this, right? Short term uptrend, short term downtrend, short term uptrend, short term downtrend, short term uptrend, short term downtrend, short term uptrend. Do you make sense? Short term or mid term, mid term. Long term, going all the way back. So when you're dealing with the primary term uptrend and intermediate term uptrend and short term uptrend, these gap that there's no rule that those gap needs to be filled, right? But when you look at a bear market situations, let's say this, let's say this this was like the top, right? This this entire move right here, what we saw in late March, let's say that was gonna be that plunge before this market was actually gonna get into a true bear market, prolonged bear market that could last year, year and a half to two years, you know, suffering you know, 50, 60% decline on the indices, then at least some of these gaps will stay open. But all the gaps been filled. And I told you guys this before, right? There has never been in a history of stock market where market plunges this much and then go back to all time high, right? And in the same year, the market come all the way back down to the lows or making new lows or getting into bear market, that sequence or that scenario never happened. If this was going to turn into a bear market, if this was truly a bear market rally, what was going to happen is it would have come up here, somewhere up here, 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 somewhere, and then would have started pulling back, creating lower highs, and you would have left some of those down gaps with it. And then you would have kept making other down gaps. But that's not the story, right? That's not the story. What we see right now is market recovering all the losses in about four months. S&P is back to all time high level, filled all the down gaps and opened up all these up gaps. Trend is strong, right? And when you're an uptrend, what, what does market do? What is the definition of an uptrend, right? What is the definition of uptrend? It's a basic, basic technical analysis. It's higher lows and higher highs. What does that mean? It means when we see a pullback, it pulls back to cultivate and establish higher lows. So on the next pullback, it has higher probability to pull back to cultivate and establish higher low instead of thinking you're gonna think that this is gonna come all the way back down to 220, right? So. I believe correction potentially coming. I've been continuing to, you know, um, taking some profits. Doesn't mean I'm all out of my longs, right? I, I'm a long-term investor also. I'm a position trader and a long-term investor. And some of my positions I've been long, I've been long since 2016 lows. I'm still holding those and been adding into it. And I'm long-term investor, so I'm gonna be continue to hold that. But for my, you know, aggressive positions and some of the uh, stocks that have been completely like, you know, gone up a lot, I extended. I took profits on those stocks, but I'm still holding many longs at this point while preparing to uh, face a pullback and coming up with a strategy how I'm going to deal with that. Does it make sense? So, like I've been saying last couple of weeks, our attitude um, is going forward is we want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, but at the same time, know that market is extended. So this is not a level you want to be aggressively long, obviously, right? You had your chance. If you didn't have, if you couldn't find the perfect bottom here, you had your cup, you have a many chances here. Even if you didn't find some lows here and here, your entries here, well, market gave us another one back in, you know, uh, June lows at 300, in which I talked about this is a great level of support, right? You know, we talked about how there's that horizontal pivot. You can go back and check my mid-June weekend video, right? 
and talked about how my midterm moving average is continue to rise higher midterm moving average on my daily chart and it found support here found support here and it finds support here it's it has impressive resume so when this thing came down we had to give benefit of the doubt not to mention my longer term moving average was you know residing in that vicinity not to mention we have the rising pivot right and with all that process all these gaps were never filled what does that mean it means buyers are in control and bears not able to even fill those gaps and these certain levels of support has been acting as pretty strong support and in that process we've been continuing to cultivate a higher lows and higher highs and we're still in an uptrend so we're here uh, at the resistance very prominent resistance everybody knows what 330 340 means right that was a pre-covid level and it's too prominent it is way too conspicuous everybody know this level so you think that this is gonna be resistance and it's gonna come crashing down I don't believe so um, I, I think I mean if you ask me what I'm what is gonna happen in the short term I wouldn't be surprised to see continue high. maybe a short-term pullback but continue to move higher because the market is great at um, conditioning complacency for traders and investors Market is going to make sure that you think that this market will never ever pull back again. And at a certain point, we're going to see a steeper pullback and it's going to get a lot of people scared. And, and when, the, when we see next pullback, people are going to start talking about second wave and all the negative situation was, is happening right now economically and fundamentally. And when that pullback actually happens, it's going to be difficult. Market never, I want you to know that market never makes it easy, man. Even though so many people thinking right now, oh, I just can't, I just can't wait till see next pullback because I want to accumulate at the time. Market is going to do something where it's going to be extremely difficult. So it's extremely difficult to chase it up here. And when the next pullback happens, it's going to be also like it's going to do something to make you feel very fearful to buy that dip as well. Just think about how you fell back in 300. Think about how you fell in 270. Think about how you fell 270, 260, 250, 240s. All right. So let's continue to navigate this market together, I'll, you know, and we'll, we'll re-examine next week. But um, I want to continue to give benefit of the doubt and trend this up. Uh, we are kind of extended. But again, market can, market can correct through time, meaning it can grind and grind and grind. Or it can even pull back a little bit and consolidate before going higher. We saw this here, the short-term consolidations, short-term consolidations, short-term consolidations, short-term consolidations. Think about all throughout May, April and May. Think about some of these consolidations, right? In a bull run, you don't see a big fast move. That's when you see a bear run. And then that's what gets so many people scared because it, it inches so little by little, ever so slightly, every single day that it feels like any moment this thing gonna just just so just go berserk on us, right? And so um, stick with the trend and don't come to a dramatic conclusion will take this navigate this market day by day let's go to Q's real quick here Q's obviously that that moving average man that 20 MA moving average we've been talking about this uh, I don't know for ever since when that 20 MA moving average got reclaimed here right um, that was it that was the level that uh, ever since then, I've never looked back, right? And how many people are trying to call top on the NASDAQ, right? Remember all-time high? Remember Spider? When NASDAQ was all-time high, what are people were saying? There's no way. There's no way this is going to keep going higher, right? We're going to need to see at least 15 20% correction. Remember what people are saying? And I said, if that happens, there'll be a gift. But that didn't happen. We see very, very little short-term, 2 3% pullback right there. And then look at that. And then we continue to find support 20 MA. Nobody knows where the top is, man. What you have to do is you got to learn to manage risk while learning to how to ride these trends to the upside. Let's go to transport. So transport finally got up here. Fill this gap. We got like tiny gap left, but that big gap was filled. Remember how lagging transport was? 
transport made from the lows is up 65%. That's the same performance as NASDAQ. NASDAQ did 65% since the March lows. Transport also did 65%. Year to date basis, obviously NASDAQ is way up, but just looking at the performance last four months, Transport versus NASDAQ, they are, they are sharing same performance. Look, 66, 65, correct? On the NASDAQ, since March lows, look at the transport. What are transport doing? 66, 67, same exact performance in the last four months. So you make it, it, it made sense. And this is something that I said in back in June and July when NASDAQ was kept going higher without any kind of you know sizable correction like in that, like the transport did. I talked about why chase, if you're not already in the NASDAQ or NASDAQ stocks, why chase NASDAQ when there are other lagging indices and these, these sectors and the stocks that you could potentially buy for a move? Because if we look at just last two months of performance, that's that's 26% on the transport, last two months, okay? 26% on the transport and 17%, like 17, 15%. So if we measure it from June lows, late June, 15%, late June. See, that's a late June right here, late June, right? You see that late June, transport did 26% since the late June. Okay, I'm not doing any, anything tricky here. Look, late June, right? From late June to now, NASDAQ is up 15%. So despite the fact that NASDAQ, NASDAQ has been, you know what I mean, making some uh, great, performance right but if you understood that some of these and we talked about this for months now that these lagging indices are performing better in the last couple months you get the transport is up 26 percent while the nasdaq only did 13 in the same period so it makes sense instead of if you're not already in it chasing nasdaq not chasing nasdaq but look for some of these sectors that had, and, you know they're lagging and then get into it and then ride this rally. Let's go to Russell 2000. Russell 2000 made new highs. That's actually kind of a let's see. Uh, let's not really. Never mind. I thought this was an island reversal, but it's not. But what is that? What is it? What's what Russell 2000 doing now? Higher high, right? This gap still hasn't been filled. And remember. Transport already got up and filled this gap, and it looks like Russell 2000 is gonna get up and fill it too, All right? And that's that's kind of how I was playing this um, in you know in early in late June and mid June. You know, I was I was accumulating, and I was already long on Nasdaq stocks and some of the Nasdaq you know QQQ call options and things like that. But I wasn't chasing Nasdaq. What I was doing is I was accumulating Transport and the banks and the small caps as they outperformed the NASDAQ in the last couple months basis, right? Transport out for, outperformed the NASDAQ last couple months and, and Russell 2000 also outperformed last couple months, right? Um, so it looks like we have, a, we have a support here, prior resistance, potential new support. So if we do come back down, potentially support going back up here. And we do have a higher highs and higher lows here. And we want to respect that. We want to respect that. And we talked about this even back in June. Even when this thing was pulling back, I talked about we got the gap area. We got the higher high. We want to respect the uptrend, right? There are a lot of grindy action. But market is never smooth. Never makes it easy, right? That's why understanding longer term aspect the longer term trend of things would help you navigate this market and, and maximize your trading strategy. Let's go to the banks here. So banks are lagging now, right? Banks are lagging. Banks, you know, like Russell 2000 didn't make higher high. Or I mean, Russell 2000 made higher high. Transport is already, you know, got up here somewhere. 
uh, banks are lagging. So you can see banks here today still down 18%. And, you know, we, we learned about how, uh, you know, uh, Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett um, accumulated Bank of America stocks uh, late July, late July. It was like it was it was in this vicinity. And, and think about how the way he approaches this market. Why not put his billions and start putting in the market? Why, why not start buying Square? Why not start adding into Apple shares now? Why not buy Amazon? Why not buy Tesla? Right? Why not buy Lowe's? Why not buy Spotify? Why is he buying Bank America when the bank's been extremely, extremely lagging and underperforming? I just explained to you in this video just, just minutes ago why. See, he's not chasing. And I don't chase. None of you guys should either. You see what I mean? So um, looks like that so uptrend support has been holding, right? Um, I think also good news is that we're, we're seeing some of these moving averages crossing to the upside. And so uh, there's a support now here at 24. Potential bull flag here. It could break either direction though. But I think banks is also going after these gaps right here. So what's gonna happen? What I feel like what's gonna happen is Nasdaq is gonna continue to grind or maybe pull back or consolidate. We seen some of that earlier this week where Nasdaq was down about one percent, but we saw like transport, small caps, and then like banks making a move. I think something like that is gonna continue next week. Uh, let's go to gold here. And so as you guys know that I've I told you guys last week, last weekend video, that I've exited all my gold, silver, and GDX gold miner shares, and I had a gold mining stock, so I've exited all of them last week. Um, and and that those those you know those positions I gone long back in like you know mid 2019, been been adding, accumulating on these dips, and that's kind of what I mean is I never I never chase. This is when 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 you when you see a stock or ETF or, or indices getting way too much attention and seeing some euphoric like move. That's when everybody want to get in. That's that's when you want to get out. And it shouldn't matter though. Like let's say if this thing kept going higher, why does it matter? You executed your trade. You perfectly executed your plan. You should be very proud of yourself. Not concerned about try to trying to extract every penny. That's what poor people do. You know what I mean? Trying to extract every penny from this market. You can't do that. We're not here to clip coupons, man. All right? So you, you want to be disciplined in your approach. You want to be patient in your approach. Get in before the breakout and be patient through these up and downs. That's what I had to do. Think about how I went along here. I had to go through this. I had to go through that. I had to go through this, 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 this. Right? And then after one, finally, I reaped what I was sowing. And then when I see a euphoric move, I get out. I'm not saying this is a top. I never called a top. I just, I'm very satisfied with my gains. I'm getting out. That's what I said. But we do see that um, there's a gap down there. That gap needs to be filled quickly. If not, this gap down is going to make things hectic. If this doesn't, if this gap doesn't get uh, filled right away, it, we may see continuation to the downside. I'm going to be preparing potentially buy at some point but when I when, you know the reason why I got out here when I looked at when I analyzed my weekly chart I was I was seeing all kinds of uh, extremely extended uh, sentiment same with silver I got uh, all of my silver um, up here actually I got a silver early like right here 25 I didn't quite got all the way to the top I did with the with the with the gold but now with silver silver I got out like here just a couple days before the peak there but also there's a gap um, that has not been filled here. Let's annotate that on gold also. And that's, that's, a, that's a use unusually bigger gap down. Cause you can see gold usually makes like these gaps, this kind of like, look at these smaller gaps. Um, so that's unusually kind of a bigger gap. Um, looks like people are taking some profits, which I've done. And, you know, again, I, I was long on silver at these levels and I even bought here, here and here. I was accumulating here. Guess what? I there was a point where I was making some, not making anything. All my gains were gone. But at the end of the day, it was very satisfying gains. After a while, because a lot of it is when you first enter. A lot of it is a lot of it patience, waiting, and when the markets are pulling back. You know what I mean? That give that gives you a little bit more 
the opportunity to accumulate and you're waiting for a breakout like that, you never ever chase after the breakout because it's, that's, that's when you're going to start worrying every single day because you chased it. You chased it. You know, it's that, I mean, gold started getting lot. I told you about this last week and week before. Gold is getting way, way too much. Gold and silver are getting way too much attention. We're seeing all kinds of publications coming out where the gold is going to be. And then everybody's getting all excited because gold is just breaking out. And that's what I like to exit. When everybody gets excited, I want to exit. When, every, when nobody wants it, that's when I want to buy. Right? And we all know you want to be greedy when everybody's fearful. You want to be fearful when everybody's greedy. Everybody knows this. Everybody recite this. Everybody quote this. But nobody, not a lot of people know how to truly utilize or, or, or you know, apply it in, in real trading situations. So um, we'll come back tomorrow. I mean, next week. And But again, when I, again, when I was doing my weekly, my weekly and monthly analysis, my longer term analysis, um, I came to a conclusion that they were extremely overbought and we're in a euphoric air level and it might see a pullback. And when and again, I didn't call top because market correct market can correct through time or price, or it could consolidate. Who knows? It could consolidate for days, man, and then move higher. Right? But I've been very satisfied with my gain there. One last one, let you guys go with this Bitcoin. You guys know that I've been long finally gone long here back in 1170 or so 1150 um obviously i'm still holding there but see good news is this level is holding right that level is holding so let's zoom in here a little bit so we got that gap right and let's move this up to annotate that gap area let's uh close this uh box there so what are we seeing right now we're seeing the high higher high low higher low is this gonna be that higher low i don't know i don't know see it might go up and then maybe come down lower before higher low or we might continue higher that i do not know that i do not know so but for now we it's a good thing that we found support prior resistance potentially it's new support my 20 m a short-term moving average there my mid-term moving average they're all rising higher that's a good sign. Benefit of the doubt goes to buyers in the short term and mid term. And I like the fact that, you know, maybe moving out here, looking at more of an intermediate term. I'll look at this as a more intermediate term here. I'll, I'll look at this as a primary term. This is a primary term, but intermediate term looking, looking at the intermediate term, you can see, I guess, intermediate to primary, I guess. Um, we, we were in a downtrend, right? And then something shifted. Something shifted when we cultivated for the first time higher high and then this higher low. See, the thing about it is last time we did have a higher high too here. So that's a high, higher high. What we needed to see was higher low and higher high again, but we made lower low. See, that, that, was, uh, that, that tells us that this was now getting into a falling channel. So... I think as long as we stay in this, and you can see this was important, that pivot high, right? That swing high here, and we've actually slightly cleared above it. And that that's a subtle higher high there. So we got all the good signals here, right? So I want to be continue to be long, and we'll see how it plays out um, next week. And I'll come back to you guys next weekend. But, um, well, I'll come back to you on Monday, right? I'll let you guys know how this market is behaving on Monday morning. See if that 65 minute chart uh, hammer candle gets confirmed. See if that 65 minute chart oscillators gets crossed up and see where it's at. Is it an oversold? But you know, all of that. You can follow me at 2K Kim. I've been tweeting things out this week. We'll go from there. Enjoy your weekend and good luck trading next week.